Guys, listen to me. You can study your ass off for up to three months, know every piece of information in first aid, U world, pathoma, sketchy, blah, 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 blah. Doesn't mean shit if you don't have the right strategies, the right state of mind, and the right self care leading up to and going into your exam. The exam itself is just as big a hurdle that you need to get over as memorizing all of the information that's tested on the exam. Because of that, I'm going to share a video right now with all of my strategies for scoring really high. This video is gonna focus on things that you can do to sort of biohack yourself into performing your best on test day. So let's get right into this. The day before the exam, so literally one day before your exam, you have to do two things to get yourself in the right position to take your test the next day. The first thing you have to do is wake up really early, and I really, I do suggest waking up at 5 a.m. You wanna get your ass up out of bed the day before and exercise that day. I don't care if you go for a jog, if you lift weights, it doesn't matter, but you need to engage yourself in physical activity after having woken up at around 5 a.m. that morning. Now, the reason that you do this is because you don't wanna have trouble sleeping that night. And what everybody unanimously reports is that they have trouble sleeping the night before their exam. But if you woke up at five in the morning and you exercised the day before and you ate relatively healthy and took care of yourself that day before, you will have no problem sleeping that night, okay? I also recommend that you check out something like a white noise machine on Amazon because if you use that the night before, you'll habituate to your environment and you won't have any excuses for not having gotten a really good night's sleep. Now, I don't know how much time you need to sleep, but I would recommend between eight and nine hours the night before. But the day before, wake up at 5 a.m., get some exercise. Hopefully you have some type of white noise machine in your bedroom that can help you get some restful sleep the night before. Sleep about eight or nine hours and you're good to go. Now let's talk about the night before. So before you go to bed, you have to do a couple of things. You need to pack your, your food for test day. So what I recommend is that you buy a drawstring bag or some type of small bag. It can be anything. And in that bag, you need two things, two very crucial things that you will use during all of your breaks on test day. You need water and you need protein bars. And ideally, the protein bars need to be um, relatively low carb, relatively high fat and protein, okay? The reason, and we'll get into this, that you do this is because we need to optimize how the brain is being fueled with which macronutrients. Water is the only thing that you can drink on test day. Don't drink energy drinks, don't drink soda, don't drink juice, nothing that has sugar or caffeine during the day. The protein bars, let's talk about why you're gonna eat protein bars. So every single time you have a break on your test day, I want you to go to your locker and nibble on a protein bar, okay? You're not gonna eat a big lunch. You're a fool if you pack a big lunch and you eat a giant meal during your break on test day. And the reason this is, is because after you eat, your blood sugar will spike. And this is a graph of what happens to blood sugar. In red, this is what we don't want to happen. So when you eat a high carb, low fat meal, or any large meal for that matter, your blood sugar will creep up, creep up, creep up, go out of its normal physiologic range. And then your pancreas, will take over and secrete insulin. And then when that happens, you'll see that downward slope. And it's during this downward slope, shown there with the red arrow, that we feel what's called the crash. So anybody who's gone to a fast food restaurant or eaten a candy bar knows what this feels like. You crash after you have a big meal, especially one with a high, simple sugar to fat ratio. And this is what we want to avoid on test day. So because of this, do not eat a big lunch. It's better to space out you're snacking with small snacks such as protein bars. And that's what that you see there with that green line. That's what we can achieve with a low carb, high fat, high protein snack eaten every couple hours. And that's exactly what we wanna do on test day to feed our brain the proper macronutrients and prevent a crash. So it's very important that you understand this. As future physicians, you should have a working understanding of how sugar and insulin is processed in the body. And if there's too much sugar, that ultimately gets metabolized by insulin, the brain is not going to feel at its best. Now let's talk about the morning of. So you wake up and it's test day. You're feeling a little jittery, that's gonna be normal. How do you start the day? Well, I'm sorry if you don't eat breakfast, guys, but you have to eat breakfast this day and you have to drink a little bit of coffee. So the, what we wanna do on test day is drink one half cup of coffee, okay? Here's why. If you drink a full cup of coffee, you're gonna overload yourself with caffeine, you're gonna feel anxious, you're gonna feel jittery, and you're gonna to have to piss like a racehorse during your exam, and I don't want that to happen to you. If you don't drink any coffee, you're gonna feel tired, you're gonna feel mopey, and you're not gonna have your brain functioning optimally. So you're gonna drink one half cup, that's the perfect amount to not have to pee and to, to get a little bit of caffeine in your system. 
Okay, so you start your day with one half cup of coffee. After you drink the one half cup of coffee, you gotta have breakfast. And if you don't eat breakfast, make an exception this day because you have to feed your brain. This is a long test, guys. It's a marathon, not a sprint. And if you don't start the day with some energy in your brain, you're not gonna have the cognitive ability to take this test. So what breakfast should you eat? The answer is oatmeal and eggs, okay? Oatmeal is a complex carb. While it has a lot of carbs in it, they are metabolized very slowly. They slowly release complex carbs to the brain and they allow the brain to function optimally. Putting a little bit of protein and fat in your diet with the eggs helps slow down that metabolism even further because in the, in the presence of protein and fat, carbs get broken down even slower. So the fact that we've already got a complex carb and we're pairing it with a high fat, high protein thing such as an egg, which is an excellent source of nutrition for the brain, this is the optimal breakfast, guys. So one or two eggs, a, a small bowl of oatmeal, this is the optimum breakfast. You also wanna pair that with the half cup of caffeinated regular black coffee, high complex carb or low simple carb. Those are the meals that we want on test day, especially at breakfast with our half cup of black caffeinated coffee. So at this point in the day, You've had your breakfast. The day before, you woke up early, you exercised, you went to bed early, you turned on your white noise machine on Amazon. I don't get anything by mentioning that. I have one in my bedroom, it's the greatest thing. But you're ready to go. You woke up, you had your breakfast, you had your coffee, you're feeling like you're gonna go crush this exam. What happens next? Now we gotta go to the testing center. So you arrive at the testing center and if you don't know what it looks like or you've never been in one before, it kinda looks like this. There's all these cubicles, they have numbers. And at each station, you have your computer, you have your little workspace, and there's two pairs of headphones. One is a noise canceling headphone that just goes over your ears and is supposed to block out noise. It may or may not do that. And the other are real headphones because you'll have some questions on your exam where you actually need to hear audio. So you'll see the two headphones. It can be really overwhelming if you've never seen a test center before with the cubicles. So get it out of your system, guys. This is the testing center. What do you need to remember for about the testing center? So you're gonna wanna arrive at least 30 minutes early because it, it, you never know what traffic's gonna be like. You never know if you have to Uber there, drive there, you get in a car accident, you get a flat tire. Leave early, get there 30 minutes early. You can always sit in the little waiting area before you're taken back. What I want you to do while you're there, while you're sitting in the waiting area, while you're getting ready to go back, is you gotta stretch, okay? You gotta stretch. Because if you feel tight, if you feel tense, it's gonna affect your mind. The way that your body is positioned in space affects the mind. And if that sounds really holistic, well, it is. There are studies that show when you maintain good posture and you have an erect, upright tone, and you arch your back and you, you really f exhibit confidence, you feel confidence and you perform better. We have ample studies that show us that when you maintain good posture and when you have a confident posture, you end up performing better, whether it's work, whether it's school, whether it's USMLE or Comlex, okay? So stretch, maintain good posture, walk around that testing center with your chest puffed out. You're the boss today, okay? Now, you're gonna go back to your desk. They're gonna you know, fingerprint you, do scan you, do all this stuff. Like you're gonna feel like you're going through the airport. You finally sit down at your cubicle and you're, you, you're sitting at the screen and you see the test turn on. The first part of the test is the tutorial, and I think it lasts up to 15 minutes, plus or minus, they may have changed that. Whichever the case, there's a tutorial, and you don't need to read it, okay? It's stupid, it, may, it has nothing that you didn't know, it's like how to click and pick answers, it's the most basic shit in the world. So during that tutorial, you're gonna wanna use that time to write down your biostats equations. So when you walk back into the testing center, they're gonna give you this little kind of flimsy whiteboard and a whiteboard marker, and you're given two sheets of paper, and d during your tutorial, you want to use that time to pre-populate that little whiteboard paper with all the equations that you might need when you get to a biostats question. Because think about it, when you get to the biostats question, you don't want to waste your time writing down an equation and solving a problem. You want to already have those equations on the whiteboard so that you can look at it, reference it, and quickly bang out whatever question they ask you. So during the tutorial, which I think is 15 minutes still, write down your equations. Write down true positive, false positive, false negative, blah, 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 positive predictive value, negative predictive value. For how to write those equations, see my video on biostats, but this is the time during the test where you write them down. And if you put them all on paper during the 15 minutes, which is way more than enough time to write all the equations down, when you get to a question where they actually ask you a biostats question, you don't need to do anything. You just plug and chug, okay? The other thing that I want you to do is use all of your breaks. So at different points throughout the day, you're gonna be offered the opportunity to go take a short break. 
take every break. There is no reason to, to power through and sit, at your and sit at your desk and go on to the next section because you're gonna burn out if you do that. So I want you to use all your breaks. And even if you don't have to go to the bathroom, ask for the bathroom key, go to the bathroom and pee out whatever little tinkles you got in you, okay? Go to your locker if you're allowed, take a little chug of water, Take a bite of a protein bar, stretch, maintain good posture, use your breaks wisely, guys. If you sit at your table and you do section into section into section and you don't take the breaks, you're going to burn out and it's not going to be good on your brain. It's going to impact your ability to crush this exam. The last thing that I want to mention is what do you do when your test is over, right? You get to the end of your test and you're done. Freedom, right? Braveheart, guys great movie, but freedom. What do you do when you leave the testing center? Well, I'll tell you what you don't do. You don't look up answers, right? You don't look up, you don't go on Google and type in a question that you didn't know the answer to and see if you got it right or wrong. Don't bother making yourself miserable while you wait to get your score back. Do not mess around with looking up answers or talking to your friends about, oh, I got this one right and I got this one wrong because it doesn't matter. It's not going to change. You got what you got. Be proud that you murdered this test. Be proud that you used science and biohacks to prepare your brain and to posture correctly because your test is finally over.